Hi everyone, my name is Georgia Spotswood from Sailor Magazine. Uh, we are launching a brand new YouTube channel. Uh, we're doing lots of different chef, chef interviews. <laughs> and today on our new show, we have a special guest. It's Philly Armitage Mutton from Master Chef The Professionals. She was one of the finalists. She was raved about by the judges. Welcome Philly. <laughs> Hi Georgia, <laughs> so exciting. Thank you so much for having me on and uh, really excited to see the new Saver YouTube channel. How are you doing in any way? Oh my gosh, really good, really good. It's, it's kind of like a um, bit of a, uh, the after MasterChef is like so intense and then coming back, you're just like, <sighs> <laughs> but I mean, at the moment I've, I've got a lot on, um, which is really exciting and I've got so many new projects there kicking off for 2021 which is like I'm, I'm just so yeah all busy all the time I'm sure you saw in the kitchen I was I was very busy and I like bring that through into my life so obviously you are master chef the professionals um 2020 um and we're going to talk a little bit about what life is like after master chef but before we go on to that what was the experience actually like yeah it was probably it was it was the most stressful experience in my entire life. <laughs> um, I I quite like things to be just right. And I, I like to um, know about what the situation is going to be like, but walking into that MasterChef kitchen for the first time, you have no idea what the kitchen's gonna be like. You have never met the judges before. Uh, you've never been on camera before. You've never seen the studio before. There's just so many unknowns and uh, you've got, and you don't know that skills test. It's your heart like, oh. <laughs> Overall, I think it was an excellent experience. I, I got to learn and grow for myself and, and from others, from the judges, from their comments. Um, I think it was so useful to, to get feedback because I, I haven't been in a restaurant kitchen for, I don't know, quite a long time, <laughs> a few years now. Um, and, and getting that experience and cooking like, uh, like refined food was, was so um, showing that I could actually do it, which was, it, it, I surprised myself <laughs> really more than anything. You mentioned there that you hadn't been in the kitchen for a long time, that like you were, um, or you are a development chef um, and you were the only kind of development chef on the programme as well. Do you just want to explain to viewers, like, first of all, what a development chef is? Um, and did you think that kind of went for or against you? Uh, so, like, people don't talk, tell you what a development chef is. So, what, going, as a, as a chef entering the career, but I, it's, it's kind of a fusion between uh, being super creative and um, being a little bit scientific and having that cooking basic skills as well. So it, it, you've got to have this like special kind of skill set, which is a combination of all. And I, I love it. I like, I, I've got a chemistry background. So I love like understanding the science of food. It's um, yeah, it, it, that's what drives me. And I love being creative and thinking of new dishes and learning. So being a development chef, what I did following, I, I previously worked at the Gordon Ramsay Group. Following that, I actually designed ready meals for retail because of that experience. I, it actually worked in my favor for the MasterChef Kitchen because without that, I wouldn't have known about Indian cookery or um, how to, the, the, the rabbit and mustard sauce. I would never know how to work, like make a mustard sauce. Um, but at the same time, I hadn't, like I said, I hadn't been in a professional kitchen for a number of years. So when it got to the chef's table, that's where it was like kind of, oh, I haven't done a service in a really long time. So doing a lot of plates by myself is like, <laughs> I quite like the chilled environment of, of the home development kitchen, which is uh, much preferred and relaxed more. <laughs> you, like, what did you learn from the experience? What did you take away from it? Yeah, so before MasterChef, I um, hadn't filleted a fish in a number of years. I had never, I'd never uh, butchered a, bit, a large animal or any like real type of butchery. So before MasterChef, I knew these are my skill sets, holes almost. So I wanted to um, like fill them <laughs> and lay, um, gain those skills because I didn't want to make myself look like a fool in the skill set. So when, when Marcus is going to give me something to butcher, I was like, oh no, I can't do that. So because of that, I actually went to uh, butchers to learn about butchery. So we were breaking down whole animals. Um, we broke down a lamb, like a uh, pig, like loads of different things, just because I knew that 
I don't want to make it, <laughs> I don't want to look like an idiot. <laughs> and then uh, with fish, I would be getting in two, two fish a week uh, from, from Cornwall straight. That's the benefit of, of, well, at the moment you can get amazing fish and amazing butchery straight to your door because like they're not selling into restaurants. So I got all this amazing produce and was cooking it and getting back to that chef instinct and that chef mind. Philly, what's it like being kind of catapulted, thrust into the spotlight? I know there was um, a bit of negativity over your social media. Um, a lot of the really big name chefs stepped up um, in support of you. But how do you how do you cope with, I guess, like being thrust into the public eye? Yeah, it was uh, it was really difficult, but. To be honest, it's just like this new, um, it's a new experience. I'd never done this before. And it's trying to navigate my way through this area where it's it's hard because I don't know the right moves to make. <laughs> I'm just like um, a bit lost. Uh, it's like trying to find a new skill set that I've never done before. And it's, it is hard, but um, yeah, it's, it's been hard. But I, it, at the same time, I've had so much so many good experiences as well. Like the, the the feedback from the public and the people that are watching Master Chef has been amazing. I've had so many lovely messages coming through. So thank it like for anyone who's watching that watched Master Chef and supported me through that journey. Thank you all. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's been it's been amazing the feedback as well. I have seen over your social media um, a lot of great feedback as well. Uh, I've also seen a lot of people asking where can I eat your food. <laughs> And I think I have to point out to the viewers that you don't have a restaurant yourself. So how do people eat Chef Billy's food? This year is my mission is to get the public eating my food because I, I don't have a restaurant and um, I don't have that opportunity. But there are other means for me to actually get, the, get people eating the food that I love and that I showcase in MasterChef. Um, at the moment, actually, I'm... Uh, designing a restaurant box which uh, is going to be available in in February um but I'm actually cooking it at the moment oh, <laughs> <are you> cooking? <laughs> <laughs> I've got some char siu pork in the oven um so it's like crisping it up and it's getting all delicious um yeah so it's all going to be about fancy street food so for example I'm doing uh, an octopus hot dog or an octo dog it's all going to be really playful um and interesting and fun but at the same time just like something that you might not have had before yeah so I'm really excited about that um do you, do you have yeah. any idea when your restaurant box will be launching yeah so it's going to be launching uh end of Feb right and where would where would the viewers be able to kind of buy that from yeah, we're going to be launching it on restaurantbox.com and it's going to be also available on my website, chefbee.com. Amazing. I can't wait to try it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you working on any other plans? Or, well, what else have you got in the pipeline? Um, I, I've got another interesting project in the pipeline. I'm going to be launching uh, a group of restaurants that are going to be delivery only and they're going to be starting up in London and we're going to be launching some really great, high quality street food. Wow. It's going to be, we're basically, we're going to be designing like a bespoke burger. It's, we do, um, I'm designing it, it's going to have a little bit of short ribbon, um, a little bit of chuck, a little bit of bone marrow. It's going to be so good. Um, and then just that premium quality street food. And that's what we're going for. How does that work then? Like, how do people actually access that? Like, how would people buy that that produce? That yeah. Product? So for now, it's going to be only available in London, but we're looking to branch out and it's going to be available on all your delivery platforms. So Delivery, Just Eat and Uber Eats. And that's going to be launching in April. In April this <laughs> year. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> I'm sure people can tell by my dulcet tones that I'm actually based up here in the northeast. So I ain't even in London. <laughs> Hope you'll be able to get your box out. I'll, yeah. I'll pack it up <laughs> and uh, send it by birds or something. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of London, um, we are in the lockdown and you are based there. What has it? Well, what's it been like? Like, how has it affected you? How how have you coped with it? And how have you been keeping entertained? Yeah, I mean. It's been it's been hard. I think it's been hard for everyone. Um, we're in a flat, but we are quite lucky. We're next to the river, so I mean, to be honest, I've been working so hard. <laughs> I don't have time to do. I haven't left the flat in five days. <laughs> but um, it's 
it have you you need to keep it entertained uh, and you, you need to almost keep that sense of stop and think and like just breathe through it I'm always getting told to breathe because <laughs> I always seem to be going 100 miles an hour but it, it, it I think it's been hard for everyone um keeping entertained uh finding little games I actually bought my boyfriend a chess set for his birthday recently just so it's like I've never played chess in my life I'm not that sort of person but you know the Queen's Gambit was on so <laughs> and actually also the best part of uh keeping a healthy relationship which I found during lockdown is um, <laughs> I've got this uh, Nerf gun <laughs> <laughs> it's excellent it's got these like little um foam bullets and if you're angry at someone you're just like <laughs> hospitality um obviously you're in the hospitality industry it's been hit extremely hard um yeah pandemic but yeah. I mean through Saver magazine through um two people that I certainly speak to a lot of people have diversified there's some amazing concepts that are out there there's a lot of um at-home restaurant boxes you've just mentioned you're working on one yourself um, yeah. there's a lot of at-home cocktail kits now um which has just been like it's been amazing to watch people diversify pretty quickly um yeah have you tried any products can you recommend anything to us I love these restaurant boxes. We've actually got one arriving tomorrow from uh, Bubble Dogs, Kitchen Table Bubble Dogs. But um, I, I've tried a lot of these restaurant boxes now and they are excellent uh, because you get all these like Michelin store, like amazing chefs and you get it delivered to your home. So I tried Aptar's box and this is probably the best restaurant box I've tried. Um, the value for money is amazing. You get a whole leg of lamb um, and like loads of different curries, all backpack ready to go. Um, and it's, yeah, it's really good. It fed us, it said it fed two people for three days. We eat a lot. <laughs> um, it fed us for like four days. Um, Aktar Islam. That's our Islam at home, yeah. So the chef that was on MasterChef had uh, showed me uh, the masterclass on MasterChef. Uh, that was a mouthful. Um, he, he, his at-home box is excellent, and it's probably the one I mostly recommend. Um, but whatever I say, also, like, he's up in Birmingham. I, if I wanted to go to his restaurant, which I really, really want to do, go, <laughs> um, I would have to travel up to Birmingham, spend the money for their hotel, all the rest of it. But with these boxes at home you can try a restaurant which you've always wanted to go to but might not want to travel all the way to uh wherever wherever you are in the country so that's that is a benefit i would say like the, the hospitality industry is suffering so much right now and it's so unfair i mean this whole thing is unfair i like i feel sorry for everyone in this situation because it is awful um <laughs> but uh, if you can, I would say like try some of the restaurant boxes because they are really fun and it does help the hospitality industry as well. What are you actually missing? What so when we come out of lockdown, which I know like we've, we've mentioned all these amazing boxes, but give me something like what what was the first thing that you do when we get out of lockdown? What will it be? Well, okay, lockdown when we're allowed to travel in in the UK. I want to go to the northeast. I had a trip plan, plan a trip plan, a trip plan um, in December to go to a restaurant tour of the northeast, and I was like, "Oh, I want to do that." <laughs> so we're going to the Ravy Heart, the Black Swan, Man Behind the Curtain, and Vice and Virtue. Which <laughs> so we're going to do all three of those, four of those, but um, lockdown happened, uh, and then I was not allowed to do that in December, but. Um, after that, when we're allowed to travel the world, I am on a plane straight to Japan or the Philippines or Indonesia or somewhere because I need to get out. I haven't had a holiday in a long I mean, nobody's had a holiday. There's a lot of traveling. And I think that was one of the things that I, um, I didn't know if you do, um, and you had mentioned that you booked a one way ticket to Japan. Yeah. What? what? <laughs> why <it>? how why because <laughs> I'm mad <laughs> um, no uh, so following following being a development chef I was, start, I was in the kitchen developing ready meals um, and my first restaurant was actually Japanese uh, French fusion sort of stuff it was uh, made in Gordon um, at Grover Square and 
like learning about all these techniques and different ingredients, it was just like so great. Um, and I felt like I just wanted to understand more about this culture and ingredients and flavors and um, how it's all made, the techniques. And I felt like the only real re way to do that was to actually go on the ground and be there and understand it. Um, and so I did, I booked, I took all my belongings into one backpack, uh, <laughs> booked a one-way ticket to Tokyo. Um, and yeah, I had spent a year traveling from Japan to Indonesia and uh, worked at the Tomb of Star restaurant, the best restaurant in Japan um, then. And then went to a Kobe beef farm, we learned about how all the beef was made, uh, got knives made in Sakai, it was a massive foodie trip. Uh, Travelled around China, I think that was the most inspiring slash uh, intriguing because the different regions in uh, China that I went to, I went through the, the west coast and the east coast and, um, oh, well, it's not coast, but like the west area. Um, every city and town you go to in China the the flavors and dishes change and I found that so interesting and it was so many unique ingredients that I hadn't seen before and I found that so like inspiring and that's what I brought back so that, what kind of food were you trying when you were out there oh, it's so cool there's um in in the north of China there's there's uh, melting pots of flavors where the spice road goes and it kind of gets mixes of chilies szechuan cumin from the um and it's all in this melting pot and it it comes in this amazing flavor there's a muslim quarter in xian and the vendors are, are cooking lamb on on rosewood and then they're topping it with loads of cumin um szechuan and chili and you bite it and it the fat kind of melts around your mouth and you have this beer and it's the most delicious thing so like in um in japan in japan so in japan i i made sure that i had a ramen and an okonomiyaki everywhere i'd been i mean i think you saw the okonomiyaki that i served the judges and that was the inspiration because it's, it's all about street food that i love um and then I would love to have done a ramen on the show, but uh, they didn't give me 48 hours. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I did have a Michelin star rest, a Michelin star ramen in Tokyo at eight. And it's probably the most affordable Michelin star meal you can have. Um, it's one of the most uh, affordable oh, Michelin star. It's like 10 pounds for a bowl of ramen. Pounds. It's so good, but they make it with a truffle base. So they put truffle in the stock. Oh my god <laughs> it's so good um and then yeah it's a tonkotsu broth so they they stew these bones for 48 hours and it's so delicious and fatty and and uh rich and then they top it off with like some truffle oil and like some truffle green and you're like oh yum have you got any top tips for people at home who might be a little bit bored who need a little bit of inspiration what what kind of advice would you give them I, when I'm bored, I like to cook, uh, which which is great. But um, I think there's a, there's a lot of recipes that are simple and easy, and you can achieve and get maximum flavor. I mean, there's a lot of recipes. Uh, I've got websites, chefbilly.com, and you can download all the all my recipes. And uh, I've got simplified versions of uh, the recipes that I actually cooked in MasterChef. So I've got the Korean fried chicken on there. I've got the okonomiyaki. Um, and I've also on my Instagram, um, I've got uh, chocolate fondant. So the fondant gate, <laughs> and it takes <laughs> it takes no time to make. I made it in under a minute. Um, <laughs> I literally put it all together and whacked it in the oven. Um, but you can you can make that really easy. It would be really fun to make with kids. And if if you don't have a fondant mold, I'm sure you've got one of those, uh, like a little ramekin even, you can make it as a lava cake. It doesn't have to be turned out. It's one some gooey, chocolatey goodness. And you can always swap out the chocolate for, uh, you can fill it with some interesting fillings. Maybe put some peanut butter in there, maybe some caramel, something good. Yeah, my website is chefbilly.com and you can download all the recipes on there. Perfect. Philly, it has been an absolute pleasure to speak to you today. Mm -hmm. I wish you all the best of luck in the future. And I cannot wait to try one of your <laughs> restaurant boxes. <laughs> thank you so much, Georgia. And thank you, Ava.